the updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the second generation of the BMW M2. This is the smallest, lightest, cheapest and the least powerful BMW M model and also the top selling one because obviously it is the cheapest. But this car is bigger when compared to its predecessor because it's longer, it's wider. The track is also wider both at the front as well as the rear. But it is lower. Let's straight away open the engine bay because this is the last of its kind because it has got a pure petrol engine here there is no electric assist all future m models or rather all future bmw models are either going to be hybrid or electric you can see strut braces the engine is actually pushed more towards the cabin for a front mid engine setup there is no insulation there it's not needed some warning thing is written right here washer fluid goes in here i think the chassis number has been engraved right here what a beautiful looking engine with the M logo, BMW M power. Yeah, it really empowers you. I don't know why it's using the old BMW logo. The new BMW M logo is all over the place abroad, but in India, they're still offering us the old one. Maybe something to do with permissions or whatever. I mean, they have to register it or something of that sort. There is no frame to the grill. The size of the grill is just right. Unlike the new M3 and the M4, rather the M4's grill is like really ugly and huge and big. BMW is ruining designs. This one is also ruined to a certain extent says M2 right here, however, the design is a bit boxy and block shaped, but it definitely looks way better in person. What a beautiful looking car. It just looks mind blowing. There's no front camera here. Lights are beautiful. You can see it has this sort of a treatment. A single projector setup, adaptive LED lights. It says BMW LED on the inside. Meanwhile, you get front parking sensors. One, two, there's one there also. So six of them at the front. What a beautiful looking stance. It looks really very aggressive. In fact, it has this huge intakes here. Everything is open here so that the radiator can breathe well, the intercooler can breathe well, everything can breathe well. Ground clearance is low, but it has this sort of a thing which prevents, <laughs> I mean, which kisses the speed breakers in a very smooth fashion, I would say. Now, this is the LED DRL, which also doubles up as the indicator on the other side. There are no front fog lights. It doesn't need it. You can see the power bulge beautiful bulge if you have noticed one thing there is no radar here it only uses a camera like the honda city for adas functions which bmw likes to call as the connected drive coming to the side of the car this is actually around 4.6 meters in length wheelbase is around 2.7 meters in length this is a very unique car because it has no rivals whatsoever because this is the only sports coupe which is two door four seater let's see the wheels because again they are very unique 380 mm discs at the front it says M around it. Red colored brick calipers with M logo on it. M written here as well. Staggered tire setup because the front tires are 275, 35, 19. Beautiful, right? There it says connected drive for the camera, which is for various ADAS functions. That is the sensor for rain wipers, of course. And you might be wondering, such an expensive car, where is the sunroof? Well, that is optional because this, or rather this optional sunroof, rather, what am I saying? This optional roof is actually a carbon fiber roof which reduces the weight by 6 kgs for better center of gravity. Wow. There's the antenna, shark fin, sort of BMW M designed outside rear view mirrors. A very distinct feature of all BMW M models. Look fantastic, of course. And the ground clearance is actually quite low. When you unlock the car at night, it actually puts a light out from here. Door handles also very different. It has this feature wherein if you approach the car, it will automatically unlock. 
If you go away, it will automatically lock as well. Rear tires are obviously bigger, 285, 30, 20. So bigger size at the rear. In fact, the alloy wheel width is also bigger at the rear. So 10.5 Js, that is 9.5 J. Red colored brake caliper, 370 mm disc. So 10 mm smaller at the rear. M logo written here. So you can't really swap the front and rear wheels because of the tire size as well as the width of the alloy wheels. Fuel actually goes in here. It's recommended to put 98 octane, of course. And here it says E5, E10 and E25 compliant. BMW M recommends Shell V-Power. Mm, where do I find that? Anyways, you've got parking sensors at the rear. There's six of them and the lights look beautiful. This is actually the rear fog light and it has this reflective treatment here. There is obviously the sensor for reverse parking sensors. I mean, this is the towing hook. Again, you've got multiple sensors almost everywhere. It has this sort of a subtle spoiler and says M2 right here. Beautiful BMW logo, quad exhaust, like real exhaust. No fake stuff happening here. Kudos to BMW, you have this diffuser treatment as well, which looks fantastic. Fessel comes fingers of truth will always stay away from these exhausts because they're so real now. They're so hot as well, literally and figuratively speaking too. Now let's do one thing, let's open the boot, press a button. Yeah, you have to actually push it upwards. There is the camera, of course. Boot is actually 390 liters in terms of size. And here you get the first aid kit. Here you get the manual which says M on it. This is actually 360 pages. Yeah, it's quite a lot of reading to do. But once you do that, you would know a lot more about your car. Otherwise, you can just watch my video and give it a like right now. It doesn't have a spare wheel. So obviously it has a tire repair kit right here. And then obviously the towing hooks have been placed right here along with something to stick your wheels if they come off. I'm just kidding. Now there's a lever here which is hidden. You pull this to actually recline the seats. I have to push it like that. There it is. So it's actually a 40-20-40 recline. Warning triangle. Let's shut this. Now this is a very classic BMW or rather the last of its kind because at the front you've got a straight six. In the center you've got a manual gearbox and at the rear you get, I mean at the back you get rear wheel drive. What a fantastic combination. I love it. BMW logo there. Harman Kardon speakers placed right here. High mounted stop lamp as well. How do I get into the rear? Well, not difficult at all because I have to actually push this like this and there it will automatically keep going ahead. Yeah, so then you can obviously get in. In fact, it says M2 here and this thing actually lights up at night. So when you turn on the car, it lights up. When you turn off the car, it goes away. So this is actually the BMW tri-colors. Door pockets are really nice and big. In fact, you can see that you can keep a proper one liter bottle here as well. Now getting in the rear is a real pain. Oh my God, let me push this back and let's get inside. So there we have it. Let me just put this behind. There are no magazine holders here. The seat is actually moving behind. This is not very hard. It looks hard, but it's not hard. There's some soft materials here. There's a hook, no height adjustable seat belts. The BMW tri-color here on the seat belts as well. Meanwhile, AC vents right here. And then you get AC controls as well, right at the back. Three zone climate control, air conditioning. Some storage space here, isofix child seat mounts because these seats are best for children, of course. And headroom is not adequate at all. My head is touching. In fact, the seat is a bit too upright. You can keep your hand here. There's a speaker here. There's some sort of a design treatment here. Legroom and knee room isn't great. Under thigh support is also poor, but it gets the job done. Center passenger is not welcome because the transmission tunnel goes from here. Otherwise, where will he sit right there? Now this thing comes out. It is honestly, it is not a center armrest because this is so that you can carry long items. So obviously I told you 40, 20, 40 split. There's a light placement here on the top and you can't keep anything there. So don't even think about it. Let me just push this ahead. There it is going ahead. It's a little too slow. So you have to take your own sweet time. If you're dropping your children in this car, always keep a buffer because they're going to get late while getting out and in from the car, of course, in and out, whatever. Beautiful dashboard design. Now we have obviously the same things which are there in a lot of other BMW cars. You see how this has been scooped out so that headroom is good at the front, but then not really at the rear. Some handle should have been there not to get out easily, but no, it's not there. So this is a bit of a task. Tweeter placement here on the A pillar. Let's just put this back. Come on, go, go, go. If you notice, the seats are the sportier ones, the BMW M seats. You can also get carbon fiber seats, which are fantastic, but it has this partition in the center, which means when you're on the driver's seat, you really can't brake with your left foot, you can't brake. So it's a bit of a task there. M colors, beautiful. It says M2, which actually lights up at night. So absolutely crazy stuff happening here. Now, obviously it has got frameless windows as well. 
It's a very beautiful looking car. I am not kidding. One auntie actually came and asked me, what is this car? It is so stunning. And I was like, auntie, are you interested in cars? She's like, no, 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 I'm not at all. And the color is just so amazing. Can I sit in it? I'm like, sure, be my guest. Why not? If somebody wants to sit in this car, I would never say no, because this is a dream car, honestly. With the window down, obviously, it looks absolutely stunning. These frameless doors are just amazing. What a beautiful looking car. Now, let's get into the driver's seat. For that, firstly, let me press a button here. So, I press 1 and you can see the seat is going behind. So, it's going to adjust according to what I've saved it to. There, come on, go back. Yeah, you get a lot of adjustment, but I think it's stuck here. I think that's the best I can do. So, I'm just going to push it behind a bit. So, there's leg room for me. This thing should have illuminated at night, but it does not do so. Under the support is never an issue. In fact, it says airbag there, yeah, right there, it says airbag. It says airbag here also, so it has plenty of airbags. Tire pressure recommendation, some vehicle information here about the weight and all that stuff. You get a proper dead pedal and you get a clutch as well. And the clutch and the brake pedal actually have an airplane symbol. This is to open the hood of the vehicle. This is not hard plastic. And here you get controls for the headlight adjustment. This is to open the boot of the vehicle, power window controls, of course. The power windows are one touch up and down, but when the door is open, it does not go up, okay? You've got memory settings, you can save up to two people's settings. That is also electrically adjustable, but no memory settings for the co-passenger. I don't know why that cost-cutting has been done. Beautiful looking interior, yeah, very high quality and a lot of carbon fiber has been splashed almost every possible place. So if you notice something, this carbon fiber here on the dashboard, it is there on the steering wheel as well. I think the air conditioning hasn't turned off. So we're just going to turn off the air conditioning. Actually, I turn on the air conditioning from behind now. So that is the reason. Auto dimming mirror, light control here on the top. There's an SOS button and the glove box is decent size, but does not get the cooling function. There's some storage space here as well. Optional wireless charger, I believe. USB-C charging socket. Some amount of storage space is actually good. Steering wheel is adjustable both for reach as well as rake, but manually adjustable, which at this price is kind of shocking, of course. Manual gearbox with M written on it. So this is the real highlight of this vehicle. Absolutely phenomenal stuff. I drive controller, electric parking brake, traction control button. This is for the active exhaust. This is for M mode. When you press this now, actually it opens the ADAS function. So you can decide what you want, road or sport or track as well. And in track, it shuts the screen, of course. So I'm just going to cancel it. When I actually change the modes here, come on M mode. Yeah, it actually changes the cluster design, but I still do not like the cluster design. It doesn't have the classic BMW dial, so I don't know why BMW is just ruining things like that. Anyways, this is the air conditioning control and there's no physical switch, which is disappointing. You have to go into the climate menu and then adjust things. It was actually coming out of the climate menu here. So three zone climate control, air conditioning. Let me get out from here. It's a bit fidgety to operate. You have these widgets, lot of information. It provides you a ton of information. So you can do crazy amount of stuff, really high quality screen. I love the way the navigation system has been done. The maps are like phenomenal in terms of quality. And then we will actually come to this display, which I'll turn on when driving the car. It shows you how much power and torque you're consuming in real time. The vehicle apps. Yeah, it has almost everything you would need. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto Connectivity is there. You can get into driving settings. Again, this is for the ADA setup, I believe. But the most important thing is that it has something known as an M drift analyzer. So it tells you your duration angle and distance of the drift, which is absolutely over the top, but still, why not? And then you have an M lap timer as well. Oh my God, isn't this so awesome? Yeah, okay, I agree to everything you say. Just show me what I want to see. Okay, then you can time yourself if you want. Meanwhile, tire pressure monitor is there. You can get engine data. You can get a ton of things right here but we should get into interior lighting. It has got only, yeah, it has got just nine colors for the ambient lighting, which is still too less in 2023. Come on, BMW, Mercedes is offering a lot more colors for ambient lighting. By the way, when you open the door and if someone is behind, it will actually blink red here. So that's also crazy in this car. I love the whole treatment, some physical controls for the volume and obviously for the air conditioning and going forward and behind on a track. In fact, let's listen to an audio right away. Audio quality is phenomenal. It says Harman Kardon here. So Harman Kardon system. Airbag is written right here. Here you get a mirror along with a light. Same is the case here as well. You get a mirror along with a light. Steering feels beautiful to hold. These are controls for the cruise control. These are for basically audio system and also to browse through this particular screen. And it says M right here. Two M buttons, M1 and M2. You can actually customize these buttons. 
let's get into reverse get into reverse is a tough task because you have to really push it there it's not dog legged or anything of that sort this is the reverse parking camera which obviously gets guidelines front and rear parking sensors which do dance quite a lot it has reversing assistant as well that's kind of amazing let's get out of this of course the best thing i like about this screen is the quality this is a 14.9 inch sort of curved display which is oriented towards the driver this is a 12.3 inch screen which is also fantastic in terms of quality and you've got plenty of information here in fact you press this button and then you can browse through a lot of things as well so here i've decided i want to actually go to the heads up display and change things in the heads up display so that is also available i can move the position of the heads up display and the heads up display changes depending on the mode so if you get into m mode it will obviously change right now i just want to get into the vehicle content and then i can change stuff so there's a g meter there's obviously a power and torque meter that's telling me which audio track i'm using right now so i can just browse through a lot of stuff it also gives me engine data it also tells me what is the setup of the vehicle like and then you can also get a map here but still i'm not really impressed by the screen it could have been definitely better right now traction control is off it is in mdm which is m dynamic mode so traction control is not completely off it has got nine levels for the traction control system so i am just going to come out from here where is this setup yeah there is a setup so you can configure all this and more which is absolutely bonkers you can configure the m modes as well and then when you configure the m modes you can decide how you want the traction control level to be phenomenal right hey bmw hey bmw see there in the heads up display also it's showing that it's trying to do something by the way it also shows you the compass in the heads up display so yes it's very tech loaded this car i love the fact that it's got a physical volume control let's open this 12 volt charging socket a regular usb a charging socket some storage space here and two cup Could holders as well that, please no i'm not interested just keep quiet i'm not talking to you right now so it will tell me a list of commands if i don't understand what to do or what not to do so there we have it it's a beautiful looking car with amazing interiors amazing features let's just shut this what i like is when you shut it it will obviously show you the bmw m logo there but when you turn on it's saying goodbye right now it's saying activate pre cooling now customize your bmw all that that's cool but the best thing i like is when you actually unlock the car at night it has an amazing graphic coming on both the screens first it comes on the main driver screen and then it comes on the infotainment screen just phenomenal in terms of quality really like the way it has been done now let's just get outside i have not shown you the key so i'll just do that this is the key of the vehicle it has the bmw m colors of course this is to unlock the car this is to lock the car this is to open the boot of the vehicle and this is to sound the alarm i believe we are going to lock the car when i do that the mirrors will obviously go inside if i keep this button pressed the windows will obviously roll down i don't know why the delay oh there it is the windows are rolling down so this is a basic feature which is almost there in almost every possible car which has a bmw badge on it of course what a car what a beautiful looking car but the real usp is oh look at that happen yeah beautiful displays wow there the car comes in i mean i can make a separate video on the screens itself they're so high tech but this is all about performance so let's start driving right away All right, we are all set to go. First and foremost, let me turn off the air conditioning. We actually get into M mode. I'm just going to change this to sport, so the cluster also changes. And now I can actually get out of this and show you this power and torque meter, which also tells me tire pressure. That's kind of weird. Now I press the M2 button. I have to press it once again to confirm, and we are confirmed. So there, the heads up display also changes. And I'm going to turn off the stop start system as well. Right next to the stop start system button, there is a parking sensor button, and there is the engine start button as well, which is finished in red. And the seats can be adjusted in a multitude of ways. Into first gear, hazard lights off, handbrake down, off rather, revving the motor, launch control active. Oh, 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 oh. 
my goodness the performance is absolutely mind blowing it really pulls hard and strong the acceleration is in freaking sane and everything gets amplified thanks to this manual gearbox here so it's a 6 speed manual gearbox which by the way is slower than the automatic it drinks a lot more fuel than the automatic it emits a lot more co2 emissions when compared to the automatic and is more expensive than the automatic yet bmw actually fought yes bmw actually fought internally to make sure that the manual is brought back into the m2 oh my god this gearbox really makes the biggest difference here and the performance is mind blowing to say the least because no matter which gear you are in you get hard on the throttle the car pulls like crazy okay let me use the wipers because we have not done the wiper test yet so i'm going to do it right now i don't care if the car gets dirty earlier i was worried about the same steering feels super awesome to hold and obviously with these m buttons have been configured by me to my liking of course The thing is that the performance is mind blowing. This is a 3 liter inline 6 cylinder engine which is just mind blowing. Okay, I got a little worried because whenever I see a speed breaker I'm like, okay, now we need to angle this and get around that, but my god, the rear wheels keep spinning. Yeah, you need to invest in a set of tires which are always lying in your house. You don't know when you need to change them. Just get rear tires though. So this guy is actually producing 460 horsepower which comes in at 6250 rpm. The torque output is 550 newton meters which comes in at 2650 rpm and stays there till 5870 rpm. I know very weird numbers but that is a very wide torque rush. Low end lag is there. Obviously an automatic gearbox is able to contain that lag. Since this is a manual you do feel that lag but then you can rev the motor a bit and then launch it as you wish aggressively. to make sure that you get the thrust you are looking for and performance oh my god look third gear it doesn't hesitate at all no matter the gear this just thrust thrust and more thrust okay we are going to get into fourth gear okay check this out in fourth gear full throttle it pulls like it is in second gear that is the kind of performance it has to offer so this is going from 0 to 100 km per hour in 4.3 seconds yeah it's point to second slower when compared to the automatic the automatic is faster by point to seconds to 100 km per hour meanwhile the difference is point 8 seconds when you factor in 0 to 200 km per hour because this car goes from 0 to 200 km per hour in 14.3 seconds the automatic actually takes 13.5 seconds the car does sound nice but the insulation levels are fantastic so you can't really hear much inside but this engine oh my god with the manual transmission is unbelievably good yes the gearbox is a bit rubbery getting into reverse is almost impossible and the clutch the first 20% is very light don't have to put effort but it doesn't engage anything so once you try to engage the whole thing it immediately feels very hard hard clutch rubbery gearbox yet i would prefer this over an m5 cs as well because the performance is just mind blowing yeah the engaging driving feel of a manual is just something else now i'm in fifth gear it's a six speed box of course now bmw obviously sells 99.999% automatic cars that's the reason they have no real experience of making manuals and that's the reason the manual sucks here in terms of gear shift quality but hey i'm not complaining i love manually shifting gears and this is the last of its kind Now the M4 CS or sorry what am I saying M2 CS which was the last era of the first generation of the M2 that car went from 0 to 100 km per hour in just 4 seconds so yeah it is faster than all of these but did not get a manual transmission option i believe the first generation of the M2 was actually launched in 2015 as the successor to the BMW 1 series M coupe Why don't they just call it the M1? Well, because they had an M1 supercar back in the 1970s, so they didn't want to create confusion. So the M2 is actually the replacement of the M1 series M coupe, and it is just like an M3 or an M4 because it shares the same engine and the same chassis, and the interior is also very similar. In fact, this car produces 50 horsepower less and 100 newton meters less torque when compared to the M3, M4. But trust me, you are driving a car which is an M3 or an M4 only, which is lighter and cheaper, but even more fun thanks to the manual transmission okay right now i'm obviously driving in bonkers mode there are so many settings in this car firstly you can alter the engine the gearbox the steering the traction control system which can be altered in 10 ways you can turn it off turn it on and when you turn it off there are 10 levels for that as well so many settings inside a car then there is a setting for Oh god I I keep forgetting because there's so many freaking settings now for the exhaust system of course for the stop start system as well so you need some time to actually go through these settings and decide how do you want the car to behave 
Ironically though, it does behave very well even on bad roads because uh, it's able to manage bad speed breakers as well. Sometimes you have to angle it. But even on rough roads, nah, there's not an issue in spite of the low profile tires. The only thing is you can hear a lot of the tire noise, a lot of the road noise as well. You can comfortably cruise in higher gear and when you're in comfort mode now with the suspension because it has got adaptive dampers, you do not realize at all that you're driving something this powerful and this aggressive because it's quite comfortable in that regard. Now obviously it has 50-50 weight distribution, a beautiful steering wheel, it is amazingly quick and fast and full of feel and feedback. The only thing is this car is made for real smooth roads, like butter smooth roads. When you drive it on bad roads, not the car is all over the place and it's not able to put all that power down. Obviously all the power is going to rear wheels, it's not easily managed manageable but trust me this is an absolute beast six gear six gear look at me i am going in six gear and it's still able to manage to like pull very strongly so you have to always have an eye on the speedometer that is the level of aggression in terms of performance which is going to stop here because you're going to launch it yet again the car is super refined at idle but you can hear a bit of the monster lurking beneath hazard lights off revving the motor preparing launch control and launch control active 7200 rpm red line and the car is swaying from left to right because the oh my goodness what am i doing i didn't even realize the kind of speed it does it's unbelievable the thrust from this car just blows your mind 7200 rpm red line is just amazing and it has thrust throughout the range. there's no flat spot in this s58 engine which actually has a 3d printed cylinder head for weight reduction and a forged crankshaft as well so it's a very high tech engine this one the old M2 actually had a dual clutch automatic gearbox. This one has a torque converter, the automatic of course, and we are driving the manual. So why are we even thinking about all this? Now, the best thing is I'm driving in fifth gear right now. Okay, I'm driving in fifth gear. Now, I'm just going to reduce the speed a bit. I want to downshift to say second gear. Listen to this, okay? It rev matches. Yeah, it has the option of rev matching as well. That is unbelievable. This car actually handles better than the M3 and M4 because it's lighter, but it's grown. I mean, the weight has increased compared to the older M2, which definitely look better to me because it's 100 kgs heavier now. You know what? There's also an option for active exhaust and also you can turn on and off that as well. And there's an option for brake pedal feel as well. So there's so many options in this menu now, which will absolutely blow your mind. Now, this car actually has a ton of ADAS functions as well. So there is a lane keep assist, there's forward collision warning, automatic emergency braking. But still, this car has actually got four stars from Euro NCAP. It's not done a full five star rating, which is kind of unfortunate because with BMW, you're like, of course, it's going to get top rating. But no, the certain issues in this car is firstly, side barrier impact test. It did not fare that well. Plus emergency lane assist and all that. It doesn't work that well in this car that it's not able to actually detect a car when you're going through a corner and it is not even able to detect pedestrians or cyclists that well so that's the reason why it's got one star less which is kind of surprising a bmw not getting the full five stars is something i i just cannot digest only so i'm just going to put the hazard lights on we're just going to come to halt look at the way it rev matches yeah absolutely stunning hazard lights off into first gear My mistake, I put it in fifth once, like right now, I have done it intentionally. And it pulls in fifth like it's in third. That is the kind of performance it has to offer. Absolutely blows your mind. Wow, the rev matching is just unbelievable. It's got active M differential, which can channel up to 100% of the power to one of the rear wheels, depending on the traction requirements and around the corners. Oh my God, it's so unbelievable because body roll is very well contained. It has supreme traction around the corners. The steering is amazing. There's no body movement as such and it stays glued to the road. It obviously has anti-roll bars and it also has got electromechanical dampers and valves and I mean the tech inside this car is just unfreaking believable the top speed of this car is 250 kilometers per hour but you can pay BMW some money I think around three four lakh rupees to get the M drivers package which will unlock a higher top speed of 285 kilometers per hour however the speedometer actually shows around 310 kilometers per hour actually we'll change the speedometer right now so I go into M mode and I go into road when I change it to sport now it reduces the number of ADAS functionalities we will also actually go ahead and change this thing so I want to get into the sport displays there showing how much power and torque has been consumed there's a g-force meter which looks really cool which kind of makes the map of something which honestly is not the thing i should be talking about because that looks kind of weird 
I love the fact that this car is just so good to drive and the manual really changes the whole freaking experience here. The suspension is beautiful for high speed driving. On Indian roads, it's not that great. The beauty is that it's able to put all that power down. Only thing it becomes kind of hairy at high speeds because there's so much power going to the rear wheels. Now, so it's kind of all over the place fighting. The rear wheels are like fighting all the time, wondering where can they go. Don't you like this cluster? You don't. I know. I'm sure you do not like this cluster. Okay, everyone is getting very horny. Whatever. That's not the right thing to say. Steering is actually light at low speeds, but somehow BMW's magic is still intact, thankfully though. And this is a very narrow opening, so we are going to go from ahead and follow that Nexon, which has a turbo and sports badging on it. Come on, Nexon, move. Not that that's going to help, it's just sort of a horn test happening right now. This car is the last of its kind, honestly. There's nothing which is going to come close to this ever again. Globally, the rival of the M2 happens to be the RS3 as well as the Mercedes AMG CLA 45S, but in India, those cars are not available. So I will just say the competition is the RS5, which is priced at rupees 1.42 crores on road Mumbai. This one should be priced around 1.3 crores. My goodness, the car sways all over the place. The kind of performance it has to offer will really blow your mind. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I know we are against the sun, but I'm just going to show you how lane keep assist works in this car. So here we are exiting a lane. Come on, put me back there. It is putting me back into a lane. So yeah, all this works really well, but adaptive cruise control cannot be offered in this car because this is a manual. You can obviously pay more for it, but you can get it with the automatic only. Now this car has a 52 liter fuel tank, which is decently big i would say but we're gonna stop oh my god the rev magic is insane and here m2 mode active revving the motor this car really oversteers and goes all over the place and if you want to extract the best performance from this car you have to fill 98 octane fuel yeah it really needs 98 octane fuel to do justice to the kind of performance it has to belt out yeah come on don't be cheap now let me tell you about something which is very confusing very very means very confusing in this car so this is the two series which is based on the one series okay the one series is the entry level bmw which came in hatchback form and then of course they started making more body styles so the coupe and convertible version of the one series is known as the two series now the two series as well as the one series is actually having the ukl platform which is a front wheel drive platform and then they came up with the grand coupe which is actually a sedan sort of a sedan that becomes a two series when technically it should be the one series and then of course this m2 has nothing to do with the one or the two series because this is not using the platform which is there in the one or two series the front wheel drive architecture instead it uses the m3 and m4s or rather the three series clar platform clar which is cluster architecture so i don't know what bmw is up to but they have created a lot of confusion here this is the eighth generation i drive uh, which is known as the i drive 8 no it's not known as the i drive 8 but whatever it's known as i have to really figure out how to cross this speed breaker right now so you're going to angle this car oh by the way it has got heated uh, rear view mirrors as well Oh my god, just don't touch, just don't touch. So that is a bit of a challenge when driving such a car. But still, I would say ground clearance is decent. It's not bad at all. And now we're going on this road, which is like terrible as well. So it does manage bad roads without much of a fuss. Just be very slow. Crawl through it. And then your left leg is going to get a workout for sure. Because yeah, there's just so much effort. Now, this is the last BMW car to have rear wheel drive. Why am I saying last? Well, because all future models are going to be all wheel drive. They've already gone all wheel drive with the 530 sorry with the m5 of course and slowly and surely they're going to go all wheel drive with all their models because with electrification happening they'll have to put two motors to get the best performance which means that there'll be a motor up front there'll be a motor at the rear resulting in all wheel drive so yeah that is a bit sad now there's also an m240i which is actually x drive yeah four wheel drive that particular car is not available in India, but uses the same engine in a lesser tune. That's also fantastic, but does not get the option of a manual gearbox. So, meh. <laughs> With roads being slippery, every time I accelerate, the car is like jiggling all through the place. So yeah, you have to be a bit careful when putting all that power down. But then you have got nice engine braking thanks to manual transmission. Nothing beats a manual transmission. Trust me on that. Okay, this is the time you've been waiting for. M1 mode, we shall activate right now which is bonkers and that the stop start system is actually active in this mode so we are actually going to press the setup thing and get into this configuration wherein i am actually going to okay what i have actually turned off this thing completely m traction control deactivated we are going to launch in this so into first gear revving the motor 
<laughs> the car is all over the place you just cannot launch you accelerate a bit and it's just going to slide and slide and slide and slide now there is no competition variant there is no cs variant the old m2 had a competition variant as well as a cs the competition was actually priced at rupees 1 crore back in the day in india but new one is obviously going to cost a lot more but omg the kind of performance it has to offer i mean little bit of throttle you give and the car will spin in this particular mode it really revs very cleanly now there is actually in m mode there is a track mode as well which actually when you activate will shut off the screen only okay only available when stationary so we have to stop here right now and then when i press this and activate there it shuts the screen <laughs> and it shuts all the adas functions as well and there into first gear <laughs> it's bonkers man it's just bonkers in fact there's so much grunt now that it turns like oh my god it just turns and flips in no time at all i can already see the tire marks on the road so if you want to ruin tires well this particular car will help you do that really fast This car is a two-door, four-seater sports coupe, and there is no competition for this car. No, ne lada, zit zero, shunya, and that's the reason. If you're looking to buy this, close your eyes and get one, because nothing will even come close to the level of performance and fun that this car has to offer. Yeah, it is way too powerful for our roads, and you need the track to really exploit it. And only 10% sales are going to be coming from the manual. But trust me on this, you can really enjoy driving this car. In fact. There's an option of a race package as well, wherein you'll get racing slicks along with carbon seats too. But you know what? Cars are on a downward spiral right now, which is kind of unfortunate. The old M2 was absolutely phenomenal. It was great. This one is very good. The future one would be good. Then it's going to become average because things are going EV. And then one fine day, these cars are just going to be bad. Trust me, because the cars are really going on a downward spiral because of. electrification so don't think that the old m2 was so good and skip on this one this is also fantastic go for it so that rather than seeing behind of what you couldn't get you look ahead and say you know what i made the right choice and on that bombshell it's time to end and some really deep thinking as well what a car on a freaking believable so much fun oh my god the way it goes through corners the way it puts all the performance down and the gearbox is absolutely phenomenal as well <laughs> bye bye